Good morning, friends. My name is Miss Robin. That's great. <laughs> and I'm a children's librarian at the Mount Airy branch of Carroll County Public Libraries. How are you today? Would you like to play and learn with me this morning? It could be really fun. Yeah. How about to get started this morning, I introduce you to one of my favorite library animal friends. Have you met Hedgehog before? Sometimes Hedgehog comes with me onto, into my programs. Oh, Hedgehog! Where is he? Do you see him? How about if you call him with me? We'll call together, okay? In our super loud morning voices. Here we go. Oh, Hedgehog! Oh, I see him. He's coming. Come quickly, 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 quickly. Oh, it's Hedgehog. Hedgehog, can you wave good morning to the boys and girls with your cute little paw? Good morning. Come a little closer, Hedgehog, so the boys and girls at home can get a good look at you. I noticed that my hedgehog has one, two eyes. So do I. Do you have two eyes? Where are your eyes? Eyes are to see with. And my hedgehog has one nose. So do I. Noses are to breathe and to smell with, right? And my hedgehog has one, two, Ears. I have two ears. One, two ears are to hear with. Hey, hedgehog has eyes and nose and ears, and so do I, and so do you. Are we hedgehogs too? Hmm, no. You know why? I know for sure. Look how little this hedgehog is. I am big, and hedgehog is little, and I think even you are bigger than hedgehog, right? Yeah, and hedgehog's body is covered with quills. They can be a little prickly there to protect him. So if hedgehog gets afraid, he can curl up in a ball and hide his face and his belly. Would you like to see hedgehog roll up into a ball? Let's count to five. And when we get to five, hedgehog, can you do your ball rolling up thing for us? He says yes. Okay, here we go. One. Two, three, four, five. Come on, Hedgehog, let's do it. Whoa! Where'd he go? <laughs> hedgehog is just a ball full of his quills. That keeps him safe, right? He's hiding right now, aren't you? I kind of like it better when I can see Hedgehog's face. How about you? Would you like to see Hedgehog one more time before he sits down to play and learn with us? Oh, Hedgehog! Can you call Hedgehog again? Oh, Hedgehog, the children are calling you. Can you please come out? Here we go. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Hedgehog is going to play and learn with us today. Hedgehog, I am going to sit you down right here on my ironing board slash table for the rest of play and learn. Okay, hmm, how about if I share a story with you that will give you something fun to do outside later because I'm looking out my window and in Maryland today, it's gonna be cloudy, but I don't think it's going to rain and I might be able to go outside. So I have a story for you. The title of this story is such a big book. I'll stand way back here. Can you see it? There we go. The title is In the Tall, Tall Grass. This book is written and illustrated by Denise Fleming. Grownups Denise Fleming has illustrations in her books that are so bold and colorful, even for your littlest book lovers. It is very attention grabbing and gives you lots to talk about in all of her illustrations. And if you look here, look. There's a child looking through the tall, tall grass. I noticed at my house, the grass is getting tall. Yeah, the boys at my house have to mow the grass and cut it short sometimes. And I know some
sometimes I'm in a hurry and I just walk right through the grass, but have you ever stopped and just looked at what's in the tall, tall grass? Did you know that there's lots to see? Mm -hmm. This book is so big, it's bigger than my head. So it's going to be, take me a few minutes to turn the pages for you, but let me show you. Have you ever played this game? I spy with my little eye in the tall, tall grass. Oh, look, something that goes Do you see these two bugs that go What is that? It's a bee, two bees. This is called the title page of the book. Let me see the title again, In the Tall, Tall Grass by Denise Fleming. I also see two red flowers. Can you point to those flowers on the computer? One, two red flowers. I spy with my little eye. Wow, who would have thought so many things are in the tall, tall grass? Should we look for more? Oh boy. I spy with my little eye something that crawls with many legs. It's a caterpillar. Did you guess right? This caterpillar has two eyes. You see them? Two. What color are those eyes? Did you guess blue? You got it. And do you see these two things right here? They're called antenna. Wow, I wonder if you looked in the tall, tall grass today, you might see something that crawls through the grass like a caterpillar. But there's more. I spy with my little eye something that sometimes hovers over the grass but can also fly. And these are in my yard. Have you ever seen one of these? It's right here, see? some kind of bird and look at how long his bill is he's dipping his bill into a flower to take a drink this bird is a hummingbird and their wings fly so fast that they make kind of a humming sound sort of like a bee and it's the noise of their wings fly flapping so fast this bird has a red throat it's called a ruby-throated hummingbird. Yeah, and if you live in Maryland, you really might see these in the yard, flying around, if not in the grass, over the grass. But this is a busy place in the grass, right? There's more. I spy with my little eye. Okay, this is something that you might see lots of because they build their houses in the ground and it looks like little dirt mountains. Yeah, and there's lots and lots of them. It's an insect that's black and you well, know, maybe sometimes brown, but they have six legs and they're so busy. Can you guess? Can you guess if you're grown up maybe what this might be? It's an ant. Usually where there's one ant, there's lots of ants. Yeah, sometimes I've looked in the tall, tall grass and found an anthill. That's their house. And ants are marching in and out and all over the place in the grass around an anthill. Hmm. So, so far, hummingbirds, caterpillars, bumblebees, flowers. This is such a busy place. Now, sometimes in the grass, you might find things that you're not sure that you want to find, like an animal with no legs. Yeah, that makes this sound. What is that? Oh, it's a snake. I have not found a snake this year in the tall, tall grass, but sometimes, Sometimes I have. These words are slip and slide. These are words of the kinds of sounds a snake might make. You make your hand like a snake. If you didn't see a snake in the yard, you could move your hand in the grass and slither like a snake. 
That might be fun to pretend. Hmm. I wonder what else we might find in the tall, tall grass. I want to show you one thing that I found. I was working in the tall, tall grass this weekend because it was so pretty outside. And I saw an animal in the tall, tall grass that jumps and has a long tongue that it uses to stick out and catch bugs. Can you guess what it might be? Oh, a toad. I named my toad Toady the Toad. And he likes to hide under a rock on the edge of my garden. And his bottom's always sticking out in the tall, tall grass. And here, this toad, his tongue is going out to catch a fly. Maybe if you look carefully on the edge of a garden near your house in the tall, tall grass, you might find a toad too. Sometimes in the tall, tall grass, you don't even have to look very closely. Just pay attention and be very shh, quiet. Because sometimes there are bigger animals in the tall, tall grass and they're trying to hide. Sometimes you might see an animal with one, two big ears and a fluffy cotton tail. What's that? Hip hop, hip hop. A bunny rabbit in the tall, tall grass. Wow. Did you know you could find so many things? So maybe today, if you're deciding to go out and play, you could have your grown-up find a string for you. Okay, it could even be like dental floss. I have some yarn at my house and I, I cut a piece of string and I tied the ends together to make of if I could hold it right a circle and if you take your circle of string you could make it littler or way bigger if you wanted and you take your string out into the grass and lay it down in the grass and use your eyes to see in the grass and your ears to listen maybe you'll hear some birds singing maybe you'll hear a bee buzzing by Maybe you'll see some pretty flowers or some ants. And when you see some cool things, you can go inside and make a beautiful picture of everything you see in the tall, tall grass, just like this book. <laughs> All righty, friends. That was fun. That was fun. But sometimes I know it's hard to just sit and use your eyes to listen and your ears, your eyes to listen. Oh my goodness, Miss Robin needs coffee. <laughs> your eyes to see and your ears to listen. I think I need to move around. How about you? Yeah, maybe we can do some bouncing. Hold on a minute. Lost my friend here. So I was thinking it might be fun to bounce around with a new animal friend. So, hmm, let me see if I can give you a clue and you might be able to guess what kind of an animal this is. It's big, it's so big that I'm gonna have to stand way back here for you to see him because his neck is so long. What kind of an animal has a super long neck that you could, he could stretch way up to the trees? Did you guess a giraffe? Oh, you're so right. Come on up, giraffe. Here he comes. Oh, look how big he is. He can be up higher than me because his neck is so long. I know a giraffe with a neck that's real high. She stretches and stretches till it reaches the sky. She lives on the plains with the elephants too. You might also see her when you go to the zoo. Yeah, do you see giraffes walking around in your neighborhood? No, no. If we wanted to see a real giraffe, we'd have to go to the zoo. Or right here, right at Play and Learn. I'm gonna put giraffe on my lap for us to do a bounce. Is your grown up around? If your grown-ups around, now is the perfect time to get them and have them sit with you. You could sit on their lap 
and they can bounce you or you guys can just bounce together because learning takes place in much deeper ways grown-ups when there's face-to-face -face contact so you're participating is not only fun for your child but also expands the learning and the brain brain connections being made okay so this is a really simple bounce so you can bounce up and down and follow my direction but be warned at the end you're going to hear me say uh oh if you're on your grown-up's lap oh you might fall through their lap or if you're on your feet you might just fall over <laughs> are you ready here we go we'll do this more than one time in case you're having a really good time and it goes so fast ready here we go bounce bounce up and down you do that up and down bounce bounce all around Woo! bouncing fast bouncing slow here we go bounce bounce uh oh <laughs> Did you fall? <laughs> Let's do that again. Let's do it again because now that you know the rhyme, because we learn things by doing them over and over again. Here we go. Ready? Bounce, bounce, up and down. Woo! Bounce, bounce, all around. Bouncing fast. Bouncing slow. Here we go. Bounce, bounce. Uh oh! <laughs> that was so fun. Did you have a good time, Giraffe? Yes? Say hello to the boys and girls. Say goodbye to the boys and girls because <sighs> now that we've done some bouncing, let's do a rhyme with our hands. I did this one last week, but it was so fun that I thought maybe we'd do it again, again today. All you need is your two hands. And with one hand, you make a bottle of bubbles. It's so fun to pretend, right? You don't even need anything except for your own hands. And with your finger, you make a bubble wand. That's what we use to dip in the bubbles. Are you ready? So here we go. Dip your wand. Gently blow. Watch the tiny bubble grow. Right when you blow, it gets bigger. Bigger, bigger, round and fat. It's so big. How big of a bubble can you make? Rainbow colors. Uh oh. And then flat. What happened? Did your bubble pop? Mine popped. All right, so let's do it again. Get your jar out and your wand. Here we go. Dip the wand. Gently blow. Watch the tiny bubble grow. Sorry, I'm not a little bit bigger. Bigger, bigger, round and fat. Rainbow colors and then what? <laughs> it popped. Have you seen the rainbow colors in bubbles? Lucky for you, I have some real bubbles and I'll blow a few and you can look at them on your screen and see if you can pop them with your fingers. Ready? Here we go. Dip the wand. Gently blow. <gasps> Did you pop some? I can hear with my ears. I can hear them popping. Ah, oh, I saw the rainbow colors in those bubbles. Yay. Yay, that was so fun. Maybe you could blow some bubbles today and make them pop splat. All right, are you ready for a story? I have a fun one today that I can tell you on my flannel board down earlier. Let's see if I can put this on straight. You see what this is? It's a magic hat. So have you ever done magic before 
When you do magic, you need a magic word. I'll teach you one. Say this. Abracadabra. Can you say that? Abracadabra. Bippity boo. Okay, so all together. Abracadabra, bippity boo. Yeah. And I heard that when you say those magic words to this magic hat, we can do our counting rhyme and some thing, magical things come out of this hat. I wonder how many things can fit in this hat. Do you think one thing? or three things? Hmm, how about if we do our rhyme and we'll find out, okay? Hmm, I wonder what's in this magic hat. Let's check inside and see. Can you do your magic words with me? Abra, cadabra, bippity, boo! <gasps> one, rabbit, can you make one? One rabbit. One rabbit in the magic hat. It works. Hmm. What else might be in this magic hat? Do you remember the magic words? We learn by repeating. Ready? Here we go. Abra, cadabra, bippity, boo. <gasps> One, two, birds flying. Can you make two with your fingers? Two. Hmm, what more could be in this magic hat? Hmm, let's say our magic words and see. Abra, cadabra, bippity, boo. Ooh, that's beautiful. One, two, three scarves. Hmm, a blue one, a red one, and a green one. Can you make three with your fingers? That's harder to do. Maybe your grown-up can help you. Three. So grown-ups, when we count with our young children, it's important to have one-to-one -one correspondence, an object for every number. It helps their brains to connect quantity with the actual word of the number that we're trying to teach them. Do you think there could be more in this magic hat? How much more could be in there? Hmm, let's try our magic words again and see. Abra, cadabra, bippity, boo. <gasps> One, two, three, four frogs. Cribbit, maybe we see frogs in the tall, tall grass and in the magic hat. Four is an easy number. Just take your thumb and hide it. And then you have four fingers. And we have four frogs. Oh my goodness. Do you think there might be one more thing in the magic hat? All right, using our best voices, now we know the magic words, right? Abra, cadabra, bippity, boo! Ooh, look at that. One, two, three, four, five flowers. Can you make five? Five. That's your whole hand, right? That's how, like, give me five. Can you do high five on the on the computer screen? Bam! Gotcha. High five. Wow! Look at that. So one rabbit, two birds, three scarves, four frogs, and five flowers. Wow! That's a lot to fit in our magic hat. Ha <laughs> ha! Yay! That was a fun rhyme. All right, I think we have time for one more thing to do. Let's play a game. Yeah, games are fun. So all you need, we can use this book together for now, but if you like this game, you can play it at home with any book about animals. What kind of an animal is that? I'll give you a hint. It says, ah, 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 ah. it's a sheep. Yeah. And the title is Life Size Farm. So if I stand way back here, then you can see, compare the sheep size to my size. Who's bigger? Me, the sheep. So we're gonna play a game and I'm gonna sing a song and you can guess what kind of animals do you think there might be in this book? So the title, Life Size Farm, hmm, maybe it's animals that live on the farm. Who 
Who are the animals in this book? Who are the animals in this book? Who are the animals in this book? And what do they say? Ready? I'm going to show you an animal and then we'll guess what it is and see if we can make an animal sound. This is a, a pig. What's that pig say? Oink, oink, oink. Can you make a pig sound? Oink, oink, oink. Mm, but there's more in here. Who are the animals in this book? Who are the animals in this book? Who are the animals in this book? And what do they say? Ready? <gasps> it's one, two chickens. What's the chicken say? Bawk, 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 bawk. Actually, I think this is a chicken and this is a rooster. He's the boy. What does a rooster say? Can you make that sound? Cock a doodle doo. Should we do a few more? Okay. Who are the animals in this book? Who are the animals in this book? Who are the animals in this book? And what do they say? This is a big one. Wolf. What is that? Let's see. D O N K E Y. Donkey. Look how big his head is compared to Miss Robin's. And this book did say life size. And I wonder if that's how big a donkey's head really is. What does a donkey say? Hee haw. Can you make that sound? Hee haw. Hee haw. Donkeys live on the farm. Look in this illustration. You can see the donkey's teeth. Where are your teeth? <laughs> okay, let's do one more animal. Hmm. Do you remember the song? We learn by repeating. See if you can sing it with me this time. Who are the animals in this book? Who are the animals in this book? Who are the animals in this book? And what do they say? <gasps> what is that? A goose. Yeah, I suppose a goose could be at a farm. What does a goose say? Honk, honk, honk. Honk, honk, honk. You know, if you drive around town near the Mount Airy Library, I have seen ponds and there have been geese there. Maybe you might see some today. Ooh, that was fun, right? I bet you could play this kind of a game at home with any animal book. And grown-ups, making animal sounds is not only fun, but it's a great developmental skill because children are breaking sounds into little tiny pieces. And those little sound bites are things that we need to recognize when we're listening and when we're learning to sound out words. So animal sounds is not only a fun game, but it is a great precursor for sounding out words when your children are learning to read. So I hope that you have fun making animal sounds today. So we're using our eyes and our ears a lot today, right? To look at the world around us. I hope today you get to use some string and take a walk outside to look in the tall, tall grass. If you do, make a picture for me. Your grown-up can take a picture of it and tag it onto this story on Facebook. I would love to see it because I miss you so much. Yeah, I miss you so much being in my house and not being able to see you. And I know, I'm sure you miss some of your friends just like I do. Yeah, so, hmm, let's see. Ah, oh, I have an old song for you before we close. Are you ready? See if you can do this one with me. My hands, my hands say, Thank you with the clap, clap, clap. My feet say thank you with the tap, tap, tap. Can you do that? Clap, clap, clap. Tap, tap, tap. We roll our hands. And say thank you 
Thank you, friends, for joining me for some library time today. We got to play and learn together. And I hope that you had some fun. And remember, friends, you are great. You are smart. You are strong. You are loved. And today is going to be an awesome day. <laughs> Thanks, friends, for coming to see me today. I'll see you again on Wednesday. Happy Monday.